Hello, everyone. My name is Sal Rodriguez, and joining me today is going to be Coach Ryan Miner. He is the head coach of the women's hockey team here at Minot State University. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit about your background uh, before coaching? Yeah, of course. So I, uh, I grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, uh, played hockey there my whole life until uh, I started juniors. Um, I played junior A and junior B hockey uh, through my uh, junior and senior years of high school uh, in northern Manitoba. I ended up um, signing a uh, letter of intent with Dakota College at Botno. Uh, where I played there for two years on their men's team uh, before transferring to Minot State. Uh, I played two years for the men's program here at Minot State, um, graduating with a Bachelor's of Science in Accounting and Finance here from Minot State. And then uh, I'm currently working on my uh, Master's of Sports Management here at Minot State as well. How did you find yourself getting into coaching? And um, at the time, Kyle Volk, uh, one of my former teammates, was coaching that team. So I reached out to him and we had a good conversation. And asked him if I could come on board as an assistant coach the following year and he was all for it and that's kind of how everything started. And so how many years did you spend as uh, his assistant coach? So it was actually only half a season. Um, Halfway through the season uh, he approached me and said hey Ryan like I'm not going to be able to do this full-time um, anymore and I, I want to be able to put in 100% of my effort and time I just can't do it. Uh, what would your thoughts be of taking over the um, my job. You know, it was kind of scary, but, um, you know, going back to wanting to stick with uh, hockey, whether it was in a coaching or management role, just because I wasn't playing anymore, you know, I, I jumped at it and said, yeah, let's do this. So, uh, but how did you eventually come to that uh, decision that, you know what, coaching is for me? Like, you know, yeah. this is where I want to be and this is the position I've been put in and what can I do to make this program better? So, um, you mentioned uh, that you were you were putting in charge of this team and and you did put a lot of effort in those first two years transitioning the team from the ACHA division two level um, where you barely had enough to to skate a few lines there um, to transferring them into the division one uh, in the ACHA where now you are recruiting athletes um, you're really bringing in some skilled uh, hockey players so uh, can you talk about that transition and what that was like yeah, you know, um, when I when I first started, you know, we had 10 skaters and a goalie. Um, our, you know, our budget was barely over $30,000, and we were lucky to travel outside the state. Um, all of our funds were, you know, raised by the players through player dues and sponsorships like that. And it was really, I, you could say, a true club sport. You know, there wasn't a lot of structure to it. Um, and having my background in accounting and finance, um, one of the first things I actually did was put together a leg legitimate budget and not so much how much where we needed to spend money, but how much we were going to raise, you know, how do we raise money so that we can travel outside the state, travel farther places, play better teams. And once that first initial budget was really set in stone, that's when we, I kind of got to, okay, now I got to start getting word out there of, uh, finding sponsors, you know, we still had the player dues at the time, but, uh, you know, I got more comfortable with businesses and their owners and they got comfortable with me. They saw the work and we showed them the work that we were putting in um, on the, on the financial side of it, things. And, you know, our budget kept growing, but we kept getting more support. Um, you know, now we have a couple of alumni sponsors. Uh, we have a good chunk of uh, a good, a good SGA fund that helps us out. That's grown as well over the last couple of years. And then our community support has grown uh, drastically. You know, um, four years ago, we maybe had five sponsors and now we have upwards of 40 sponsors, you know, throughout the community. So on the, on the, uh, management side operational side of it you know building a legitimate budget need and even now you know like our budget has grown by four times but we still are very um strict on what we spend our money on you know we're not just buying random random accessories that kind of stuff you know we don't buy everything for our players they still have to provide some of their own gear and stuff like that but um, just being responsible of money and just making sure that the money was there and making sure that you know 
the girls didn't have to worry about the fundraising so much and I put it more on my shoulders and now my assistant coaches as well. Um, on the recruiting side of it, the success that we've had over the last couple of years, uh, we're actually bringing in recruits um, here to play hockey. Obviously, there's a major here that is right for them, but we're recruiting them based on hockey. And, you know, that biggest change was when we started winning games, you know, we started transitioning or we transitioned from ACHA Division One to ACHA Division II, um, or sorry, vice versa. Um, and we joined the athletic department, you know, the more perks that were added to our program and the better it looked, you know, it, we started to, people started to actually say, oh, that's a legitimate program. So that was definitely a huge stepping stone. But I think at the end of the day, um, my recruiting tactics really haven't changed. You know, we emphasize on the culture at Minot State, the low tuition, the small class sizes, um, and the facilities that we offer here. And then on the hockey side, you know, um, we're still breaking barriers, you know, um, what we can offer recruits and future players is um, quite different than a lot of other schools and usually more than what other schools are offering them. So we try and offer them the best experience that we can. And that's how we've been kind of successful here lately. So you had mentioned that um, you start feeling more com uh, confident walking into businesses and asking them for, for fundraising dollars and, and of course their support. Um, and that alleviated a lot of pressure from your players having to go out and raise those funds themselves and provide those player dues. Um, but would you say that was probably one of your biggest challenges um, during that time period was actually growing your sponsorship and, and your dollars to fund that program? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, always has been a challenge. You know, the, the biggest thing is that I see Minot as a hockey town. And, you know, there's us, the men's program, the Minotauros, uh, the high school team. So virtually there's five or six organizations plus the boosters who are going into businesses and asking for money. Continue so I, on, the, on the track of finances. How long does it take you roughly to um, determine your budget for the upcoming season, raise that money and then feel comfortable that um, you're in a good spot for the next season? So, so it's a process. So how it started is we have to know how many players we're going to have um, for that season. And we have to know our schedule ahead before a budget can even be made. Cause then that determines where we're traveling to and how many people we're traveling with. And then, you know, home expenses of uh, equipment, that kind of stuff. So once those two things are set, which I'm in the process of right now, you know, recruiting will be done here probably uh, before Christmas and schedule hopefully should be set here um, by the end of the season, you know, going into the next fall. So once those two things are done, then you look at, you building your budget of, okay, how many hotel rooms do I need? How many meals have to be provided? Luckily, we have a, a structure in terms of per diem of how much we can spend every day. Um, you know, uh, is it a flight or is it a bus? Um, so our budget is very straightforward. You know, on the road, we have transportation, hotels, meals, um, and then ice time on the road. Those are the four things that we, that's the only four things we spend money on on the road. At home, game days, you know, we have our refs, our ice fees, um, and paying our workers who run our games. You know, other than that, that's it. Our equipment is all ordered at the beginning of the season, and then we never have to order equipment throughout the year. Everything's th there. So really we make sure, again, going back to it, we only purchase the things that we absolutely need, and there's not anything really extravagant. Awesome. You know, and you mentioned earlier how the transition to athletics has helped open the doors for um, facilities and helped legitimize your program um, to potential recruits. Um, briefly, can you touch on maybe what else athletics has helped your program achieve and, and what that transition looked like um, I guess on, on your end? But You know, since joining athletics, you know, we've we've it built a structure now I report to a super sport, a supervisor who then also reports to the AD you know so now I have people telling me what I can and can't do at times so that leadership now that's been added and the structure of being part of athletics has definitely been huge for me on an organizational side um, and management side of the program 
Um, at the same time, too, uh, they treat us, you know, like an athlete, uh, NCAA program, you know, so that's a good uh, selling point when we're talking to recruits, you know, we're offered the strength and conditioning um, through Caleb at the university, you know, who's also training with the other NCAA sports. Uh, we now have a full time trainer to, you know, see to any injuries or any needs of our players at practices, games on the road, that kind of thing. Um, access to the Francois Academic Center now, you know, a bunch of different things that we never had or that we if we did have we had to pay for yeah. on a on a typical day what does does your job specifically look like so a lot of it is mostly spent on the computer you know every morning when I get into the office I go through my emails uh, right now uh, is kind of prime time for recruiting so you know um, seeing this checking to see if any new recruits have reached out, making sure I respond to recruits um, who have already uh, shown an interest or that I've shown an interest in. Um, and then as well as, you know, um, making sure like right now, I'm also preparing our schedule for the following season. You know, you know I do daily checkups on my players. You know, I have a list of, okay, today I'm going to call or text these players, make sure they're doing okay because most of them are back home, see if they need anything. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, you know, in season, um, usually most of the time, again, it's a lot of emails back and forth with coaches, players, um, you know, going through film. Uh, if we have a game on the weekend, you know, going through film and making sure that we're prepared for who we're playing, you know, uh, we're practicing about four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So I usually would head to the rink around uh, three, uh, three, four o'clock if we're practicing at five. And, you know, um, going through a practice plan with my assistant coaches, uh, making sure that we have the appropriate uh, equipment needed for on the ice that day, um, knowing kind of what our game plan is. You know, every day before practice, I go into our locker room and put uh, lines up, whether it's going to be the same lines from the day before or we're changing up a player or somewhere here or there, and then writing our practice plan on the board, uh, you know, so that the girls know what we're doing ahead of time. So. Uh, so that they can prepare for practice. And then, you know, we run through practice on ice. Usually it's an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. And then um, after that, usually most of the time, my assistant coaches and I will sit in our coaches room and kind of discuss how we thought practice went, who was, who was on, who was off today, places of improvement and those kinds of things. And then usually um, if we have to t chat with a player or, you know, um, clean something up, maybe that we didn't like from a player in the previous weekend, you know, we'll pull them uh, aside and bring up a film and say, hey, this is what this is what we saw. This is how we're going to fix it, that kind of thing. So a lot of communication, you know, in our job, um, more time is spent off the ice than on the ice, obviously. Um, but a lot of it is whether it's communicating with players, other coaches, recruits, uh, people within the athletic department and the people we work with. So uh, usually it's a lot of time spent on my phone or on the computer um, and just making sure that everything's set up so that, you know, we can be successful and everything. All the girls have to worry about is playing hockey and going to school. Now, I was fortunate enough to shadow you during a game day and the three hours mm -hmm. were spent uh, mainly before the game, naturally, mm -hmm. but um, you're kind of a man of many hats. So yes, you have the technical coaching side, um, the recruiting side, things like that. But uh, as you mentioned, you also make sure the uniforms are in everybody's locker. Their their skates are sharpened. You've like I said, you've done a little bit of everything. So on a day like that, how much running around is involved, um, and how stressful does that look like on your typical game day? You know, I've been lucky enough, you know, um, to hire my assistant coach here last year who really stepped up and helped me because for a lot of the time I would felt like I was doing a lot of things on my own. But a typical day, a typical game day, you know, if we're playing at five o'clock at night, I'm at the rink by 9, 10 a.m. setting up our media booth. Uh, making sure that all the uh, game day uh, times are on the lock are, are on the locker room doors and making sure that our trainers all set up and then setting up the ticket table and making sure that everything's ready to go for security. So usually I try and get everything done ahead of time going into the locker room, making sure that it looks good, making sure jerseys are taken out and put in their stalls. And then so that by that time I can go home, you know, around lunchtime, you know, have something to eat, have a shower, put the suit on and then come back to the rink. And by the time I come back to the 
rink, I'll, I'll do like a walkthrough and make sure that everything that I set up earlier is in place. And then, but then that gives me time to not run around as much right before the game. You know, I've been bad for that in years past. So that's kind of why I changed it up this year and make sure then, then I can just focus on the, the game at, at hand and, you know, uh, run through our game plan with our coaches and our players if we have to do any meetings before the games and that kind of thing. Done here. Um, I just want to ask you personally, of course, we've covered it already. You're a young coach. Um, you're coaching ACHA Division One, arguably one of the best teams in the country. Um, some of the nicest facilities, nicest amenities. Um, what are some of the biggest rewards for you as a coach? You know, I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, have seeing the success, you know, nothing I do is for myself. Everything I do is for the team. So when they start to see the rewards, when they walk, walk into the rink every day or leave the rink smiling, you know, enjoying themselves, you can, you know, when they're, when they're improving on the ice, when they're playing well, you know, you can tell them seeing that and seeing their success is what drives me. So you know, I would say that it's really how the players react and how, you know, obviously when we're on the road, they're thankful for the meals and everything like that. And, you know, we try, we get them the new, the, we got new jerseys this year and different things like that. So obviously making sure that they're taken care of. And at the end of the day, that's what satisfies me, you know, making sure that they're happy and they're enjoying the experience. Um, but what might be some goals that you have um, personally for your coaching career? Well, you know, first on the list is winning a national championship. Uh, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm happy here at Minot right now. Uh, this is the first year that every player on the team is someone that I recruited. Um, so I want to make sure that I see that through and see them get through their four years. But the real goal in, down the road is to be uh, in a management position uh, for a professional team, whether it's at the college level being, um, you know, a director of hockey operations or, you know, being a general manager for a junior team or even moving my way up into the professional, semi-professional leagues, being a GM at that level. You know, that's kind of the goal because I love coaching. I love the on-ice development. But um, one of my favorite things to do is the off-ice, building a budget, you know, recruiting, uh, making sure that the things are checked off the list, bills are paid, raising money, you know. I, I thoroughly enjoy that, you know, and so that's kind of why, you know, eventually at some point in my career, I would like to switch to just an office position. And so I think you've laid a really solid foundation, um, especially at a young age. You've done a lot more than a lot of 25 year olds in the game um, have achieved. So I, like I said, I think you have a strong foundation. I, I want to finish things off on maybe any advice that you have to anyone that's looking to, to get in the coaching or looking to move into um, maybe an office position like you and might have to take the coaching route. Um, what advice do you have for them? I, I think the, the one piece of advice that I can give is don't expect others to do things for you. You know, especially if someone's looking to start a program or work their way up in the rankings, you know, there is going to be a lot of things that you have to do on your own. Um, and can it really expect someone else to do it for you? Well, Meyer, uh, Coach Miner, I appreciate your time. A um, lot of great information there, and uh, best of luck to you in the second half of the season. Um, and as always, go Beavers. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Stel, for having me.